This section will discuss the colligative properties of a solution. Colligative properties of solutions depend exclusively on the number of solute particles in the solution, uh, not on the kind of solute particles. So we're going to be looking specifically at the number of solute particles. Examples of those colligative properties, vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure elevation. Vapor pressure. When a liquid or solid evaporates, the vapor above the liquid exerts pressure on the surface of the liquid. When condensation and evaporation occur at equal rates, the vapor is in equilibrium with its liquid. So we see here, down at the bottom we have a liquid, and as the water molecules or whatever the liquid molecules are at the top here start to evaporate and become vapor, those vapor molecules exert a pressure here at the surface of the liquid, and that pressure is the vapor pressure. We can get equilibrium if the rate of molecules going from liquid to vapor is equal to the rate of vapor molecules going back into liquid. Vapor pressure is influenced by the strength of the solvent particle interactions. The stronger those interactions, the fewer particles are free to be released from the liquid into the gas. So as a result, the vapor pressure of a solution is lower than the vapor pressure of a pure liquid at a given temperature. And that's because for the solution, some of those particles are tied up in the solvation process and are not free to evaporate into the vapor phase. Okay, so let's just compare two different samples of liquids. H2O on the left, CH3, CO, CH3 on the right. So H2O, um, water, has very strong intermolecular forces in the hydrogen bonds. And so they're, they interact strongly with each other in the liquid phase. The other solution, or excuse me, the other liquid, CH3, CO, CO, CH3, does not have hydrogen bonds, so it has weaker intermolecular forces. Because those intermolecular forces are weaker, the liquid is more readily able to become a gas or more able to evaporate. And the more evaporation that occurs, the higher the vapor pressure. So here water has less evaporation and therefore a lower vapor pressure. Vapor pressure increases with temperature. As you can see from the graph on the right, uh, this is a graph of vapor pressure of water versus temperature. As the Celsius temperature increases, you can see an exponential increase of the vapor pressure. Why? As heat is added and as the temperature rises, more evaporation results. The more evaporation, the more those molecules are able to push back down on the liquid, increasing the vapor pressure. All right, shown in the table are four hydrocarbons with just an increasing carbon, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane. You can see that here by their formulas, okay? You can also see their molar masses. So you can see, obviously, as you add carbons and hydrogens, the mass increases. And you can see the impact on the boiling point, getting higher and higher and higher, or closer and closer to zero, okay? So what's happening here? Well, all five of these hydrocarbons have only London dispersion forces, right? They're nonpolar, so they only have dispersion forces. And so the vapor pressures decrease with increasing size. Why is that? Okay, so remember, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the less able uh, compound can become vapor, right? So the stronger the intermolecular forces, the lower the vapor pressure, okay? <clears throat> so as we go from methane to pentane, the vapor pressure decreases. Lower vapor pressure, we see here its effect on boiling point. Lower vapor pressure results in higher boiling point, meaning we have to increase the temperature to a higher level before the liquid will boil, okay?
Now, I've also shown water here for comparison. Water has hydrogen bonding, right? So very, very strong intermolecular force in hydrogen bonding. Uh, but it's similar size, right? Look, it's in similar size to this methane, but look at the difference in boiling point. It has a much, 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 much higher boiling point because it has much, much stronger intermolecular forces and much lower vapor pressure. Boiling occurs when the vapor pressure of a liquid equals the atmospheric or external pressure. The stronger the particle interactions, the more energy you have to add to raise the vapor pressure. And so that's why we see higher boiling points. To reach the boiling point, you can do two things. You can increase the vapor pressure. You can lower the atmospheric pressure, or you can do both. So for, I have this example for water here. So all I've done is increase the temperature. I went from 25 degrees C to 100 degrees C. Uh, you saw the graph of the exponential relationship between pressure and temperature before. So as you increase the temperature, you increase the vapor pressure. You can see that here. And um, when the vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure, you get boiling. So the vapor pressure of water at room temperature is 23.88 millimeters of mercury, and we know that water at room temperature is not boiling. If I heat that water up to 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, which is standard atmospheric pressure. And when that happens, we get boiling. In addition to increasing the vapor pressure, you can also reach the boiling point by lowering the atmospheric pressure. Um, so one way to do that is to change your altitude. So standard atmospheric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. And at 760 millimeters of mercury, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. But if you took that same pot of water to Mount Everest, uh, atmospheric pressure at the peak of Mount Everest is just 253 millimeters of mercury, so much less. We lower the atmospheric pressure and then we reach our boiling point at 72 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then we get boiling. But boiling at 72 degrees is lower than boiling at 100 degrees. And so often, if you live at high altitude, you have to cook something for longer because the temperature is lower. So sometimes in recipes, uh, you'll see a note about differing altitudes, particularly with baking. You know, if you look on the back of a baking mix or something, it'll say at high altitude. And that's because it's cooking at a lower temperature. And so you need it to cook for longer.